People get off focus. There's something in life that just shifts them, whether it's an ailment, whether it's a family member that passes away, a divorce, God only knows, right? All those variables. It's those who can stay mentally stable and consistent over the course of time that win, even if you suck at it. Where did you get your work ethic from? Because yeah, there's a lot of people, I mean, it sounds like you worked hard like early on. I may mean, see a lot of younger people, especially they're like, yeah, I don't really want to work that hard. Like, where did that come from? My parents are hard workers. They, they, they set a great example for us as far as working hard. And we grew up on a little ranch. And so waking up early and, and putting in time. And then sports. Um, I, I, I think every kid should be an, an athlete. I mean, sports is one of the biggest things that will get you mentally vertical as far as hard work. Do you, Jerome, do you have kids? I do. I got two of them. How old are they? I got a 13-year-old and an 11-year-old. So obviously you are uh, a little bit better off than your parents. Um, yeah. How are you making sure your kids grow up with a similar work ethic? Because it's hard to do, right? Because you can afford yes. a lot of things. You're like, I want this. I don't want to work for you. And then dad goes, yeah, sure, no problem. That's what we do as parents. We want to give our kids a, quote, better life. You know, what are you doing to, to, to ensure that there's still a kind of certain degree of work ethic there? You know, I, I owned a bunch of Subway stores for a long time. And um, I, I got to a point where I used to tell my managers, look, you can hire young kids that are in school, but they have to have a couple things. One, they have to be doing well in school and they have to be in something other than just school and work. They have to have, they have to be in sports. I don't care if they're in chess club. I don't care if they're in student senate. I didn't care what they were. They have to have an activity, school, and, uh, and work. And those three things were requirement for all of my managers and all 13 of our stores in order to, uh, for them to hire and bring in a student. And so I practiced the exact same thing with my kids. My son started at three years old in gymnastics. Uh, my daughter, they literally took her out of our arms at about 18 months to gymnastics. Um, they both been competitive gymnasts all the way through. They both do about 30 hours a week of gymnastics. My son, um, he's a straight A student, he does well. We've been blessed with smart kids. Um, that wasn't me. Um, my daughter does well, and uh, my daughter's also in swimming, and she does dance full time. And my son also does football, private lessons for football, and he does basketball on the side as his quote unquote hobby. And so, when you keep your kids that busy, like I told my wife, these my our kids, we don't have to worry about their work ethic. They're so damn busy that doesn't matter what they do in life. When they get out and compete with the rest of the world, they're already so acclimated to being busy. Um, life is going to be easy for them. Like when I, when I got started in my professional career, everybody told me that about getting an apartment and living on your own was tough. Michael, it was one of the simplest things I ever did. I, I didn't know any different, right? Like I moved out and I was like, holy shit, I can live for like $400 a month on, you know, I paid $165 for a little trailer park. I lived in a little mobile home and, you know, it wasn't hard to make a living. Um, you know, what's hard is getting wealthy, right? But making a living is simple. Jerome, I, I mean, I, I really agree with a lot of what you said. Now, I, I relate a little bit as well as I was in, I was like doing somewhat direct sales, but it was, uh, I was selling Cutco knives door to door pretty much. And I, yeah, I learned uh, some skills during that side. I, you know, I learned the sales skills that I really attribute to a lot of my success today. And so I'm just curious uh, in your experience, what kind of skills that either you've taught your kids or that you learned in your career that you think are the most valuable skills uh, and, and attribute to your success today? Uh, consistency, for sure, is, is probably one of the, the biggest um, skills. And it is a skill because most people, they get bored easy. Um, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm ADD. You know, if you guys hang out with me, I mean, I get my attention veers real, real easily. But one thing that I've been is I've been very consistent in my life. In fact, if I tell my life story, it almost seems um, like a false story that's impossible because I had so many avenues I was I was driving down um, at one time, right? And so um, one of the big things that I tell my kids, I say, look, you guys have to be consistent. And in early years, my son was not the best gymnast. He was he struggled. He was he's a lot. He's he's four inches taller than me already, and he's thirteen. But he was lanky, tall. And he wasn't really made with a gymnast body. And I told him, Jacob, look, there's variables in life. And it's hard to start at the top and take first place. I said, that's much worse than starting at the bottom and working your way up. Because once you're there, to stay there forever is more complicated. And it's harder psychologically 
then it is just to start at the bottom and build your way to the top and then you appreciate it more. And so I, I, I would teach him this. And lo and behold, I said, there's a lot of variables. I said, these kids, there's going to be broken bones. There's going to be psychological, emotional, family, all these variables that take people off track. And it's life, right? Like in business, we see it all the time. Um, and, and it was what happened in direct sales and network marketing. It's what happened in my competitors in the construction business. It's what we see in multifamily and in real estate. People get off focus. There's something in life that just shifts them, whether it's an ailment, whether it's a family member that passes away, a divorce, God only knows, right? All those variables. It's those who can stay mentally stable and consistent over the course of time that win, even if you suck at it. And my, a mentor of my tournament goes, Jerome, even if you're horrible at what, if what we're doing here in direct sales, if you can just get through and can stay consistent doing it, you'll succeed even if it's an accident. And that's one thing that I teach my kids and I talk to them about. And now that they're growing up and they're getting a little bit older, they're actually, they're, they can actually see it. And so it's really cool to see as they, as they mature. You know, it's easier said than done, right? I mean, you did this, uh, you know, this, this, this marketing thing for two years and you sucked at it. That's a, that's a really long time to stick with something. We try to get people to stick with something for like a year. Okay, we're like, dude, give it a real shot. And, you know, it's going to take you a year to do your first deal, which is a stretch for a lot of people. Because, you know, once the enthusiasm wears off, you know, you, you take a seminar, you start hitting the phones, you're super excited. And then after about two months, you're like, ugh. It's not going anywhere. No one's no one's biting, right? I'm calling brokers. They're not taking me seriously. I'm not getting in deals. And then after two or three months, people get really discouraged. And so the question is, do you have any kind of advice for people to stick with it, right? Because like you said, sometimes it takes a little while. And especially if you're not very good at it, and sometimes you can't, you don't control everything, right? You gotta get a little lucky sometimes. But what are some of the things that you did? I mean, you know, you got a bad day, you're getting up and you're like, this is day 169, you know, and you're like another day. Why should I pick up the phone today? Why should I bother doing anything? You know, you got to have, I mean, I come from a family that practice. I'm a, I came from a traditional Catholic family. Um, we practice faith, no matter what we go out and drink on a, on a Friday, on a Saturday night and party. And on Sunday morning, we were at church, um, all of us, friends, cousins, all of us. So I, there's a little bit of faith involved in that. Like you got to know that the direction you're going, um, you got to have some faith in what you're doing. That's huge. Um, so people that don't have that, I don't know what advice to really give them because that's what really pushed me through a lot of those times is that I believed, right? Like I, I knew I was doing good. I knew I was going in the right direction. I just didn't know quite how to get there. I just, and so in the back of my mind, I just kept telling myself it wasn't the, the vehicle. It was me. It was the driver. And I knew it was me. That was the variable. And I honest to God knew that. So a lot of what I was going through, you know, there through good times and bad times, you know, there was times I woke up with a pit in my stomach, even in 2008, when the recession hit, it doesn't just end like in the beginning, right? And I think this is where being an athlete really helped me out a lot. Um, so a little, a, a lot of faith, a lot of faith. Um, my sports isn't, my, being an athlete helped me out a ton because I wrestled. I was a wrestler from the time I was five years old, collegiate wrestler all the way through college. And um, and I'll tell you, when, when you wrestle and you're in the third round, doesn't matter how many uh, miles you've ran. It doesn't matter how much time you spend on that mat. Um, it's a grueling sport. Um, and so endurance wise, uh, when you feel like you're going to die in your third round, especially like when you're in high school, college and the athletes and the competition gets um, more elevated. So that I think going through that type of pain in your life, um, everything seems to be easy. So I tell my kids that I said, you know what, embrace the pain, because then everything else in life is simple. And so the best advice I can give to people is unfortunately most people aren't bred with those type of um, of instincts they're not bred with those type of traits um, I think that parents do their kids a disservice by nurturing them too much uh, my kids aren't nurtured um, you know you know to each their own um, I press my kids every single day like I press my employees like I press my business partners like I press everybody around me if you if you hang out with me if you do business with me for a while um, I'll probably treat most of the people that are even entrepreneurs I can employ because I press everybody like a coach would um, their team. And so the best thing I could tell people, if you've never been pressed, you got to be able to mentally tell yourself um, that you can press yourself. Um, go out and run. Press yourself in multiple ways, um, you know, in, in ways that you've never pressed yourself before. If you've never been an athlete, you don't have to be an athlete to get off your ass and go run. You don't have to get out, um, push, be an athlete to push yourself to go out and do something. And if, if sports aren't your thing, then exercise. Press yourself mentally, you know, push yourself to limits you've never been pushed before. 
Um, when you feel like you're going to get to a breaking point, like we all have when we've ridden a bike or we've ran and you feel like you're going to die at your second mile, how do you get through that? You just tell yourself, right? Like I can do this and you just push through it. And it's a fat, and, and I always say pain is weakness, leaving the body. And, um, and I, I tell myself that even when I run, when I do things, when I get that pit in my stomach, um, which I still do, you know, there's projects that just don't go right. And you just get that pit in your stomach. Um, I tell people, just keep pushing through. There's a, there's a light at the end of that tunnel. I promise God won't let you go straight.